midwinter trip instead of deep winter. I wasn't expecting to worry about snowshoes or anything like that. You can always have a plan and you should, but they do tend to go awry. Whoa, what's underneath me here? Oh, oh God. Hey everybody, Syntax77 here. It is mid-December. I'm in New York State by a section of the Appalachian Trail, and I am in the mood for a little bit of winter backpacking. So that's what we're gonna do for the next three days. I'm gonna strap on my trusty Kaika 75 pack here, loaded to the gills with all kinds of fun food and uh, gear. And let's have a little fun. Oh God. That's not fun. <laughs> it's a little heavy, but that's all right. We'll get used to it. I'm gonna leave the Jeep here and uh, we'll get down to it. Whew, that wind is uh, a little breezy. It's in the low 30s and I'm thinking maybe we'll hit the forecast says the low 20s you might see the teens up here in the mountains but we'll see what happens this here is harriman state park that i'm starting out in and we're gonna do like a 20 mile loop over these next three days i'd say an average of six or seven miles a day but only like 1500 feet or so of elevation gain total per day which is pretty relaxed you can see over here those roadblocks so in the summer you can come here and drive all the way to the appropriate trailhead in my case uh, <laughs> because of winter uh, the road is closed from here on out so I came in as close as I could by the uh, picnic area here and I got about a mile of road hike to do, but thankfully no traffic because, well, the road's closed. Views are nice so far, but after about a mile of walking on this pavement, I should be at the trailhead that I want to be, and we'll get into the woods. Well, if you're gonna do a road walk, it ain't that bad of a view, that's for sure. <sighs> I believe this is where we leave the main road. And this little paved forest road here is going to eventually connect us to some actual trails. Not quite sure what this used to be. Concrete pad for something. Interesting. The quote unquote road is starting to fade. Still some traces of gravel, but it's uh, fading out. Decent rock formations to my side there. This is it. I finally intersected with the actual trail. This begins the loop. I'll be returning from there. But I'm going to go left. To start my clockwise loop with Lake... I believe it's Tiarati or something to that effect as the center point. There's a lot of lakes and ponds around here, but that'll be the biggest one in the middle of this loop. And 
in this direction is actually where I would have come from if I had parked where I wanted to. And we're actually up on top of the rock formation that I was looking up on at the beginning of the forest road hike there. A little bit of elevation gain to get me warmed up to get up here. And from here, eh, probably another five-ish miles, not too bad. I didn't start until like 11 p.m., which for December means that I, uh, you know, sunset's 4.30, so short days. My plan for this trip, though, a little out of character for me. I usually avoid shelters, but around here, in Harriman State Park, which don't be deceived, I uh, thought State Park would mean something a little less rugged, but this is the second biggest state park in New York. It's about 45,000 acres or something like that. And the only camping allowed within park boundaries, which we are, is at or within 300 feet of the shelters within the park. You know, three-sided Appalachian Trail style shelters, which the Appalachian Trail does come through here, as well as the New York Long Path, which is kind of New York's kind of mini version of the Appalachian Trail. So my plan, because it is midweek, it's Tuesday, and it's winter, I'm thinking, I might actually try or plan to stay in a shelter. <sighs> Depends if I can get it to myself. Otherwise, I do have a small one-person tent from Outdoor Vitals, which I like quite a lot. I can pop that up in a pinch legally near the shelter, but I think that's gonna, what I'm going to try to do. Interestingly, I was originally planning on doing fingerboard shelter which is about five miles away as well but about halfway through my planning oh look at that view there's the water down there nice halfway through my planning though uh, I read that that shelter is temporarily closed and it's not because the shelter is all beat up or anything but I guess for a few years now there's been a nuisance bear that has zero fear of humans, has learned to take down bear bags, and has some cubs tagging along. But she's teaching the ropes for stealing hikers' food. I don't mess with bears and cubs. So I went back to the drawing board. And I actually just went on Google Maps and did search nearby, clicked in shelter, just as a Hail Mary, a Hail Mary pass. And uh, believe it or not, something popped up and it just said long path shelter, which was strange to me because most of the shelters on the long path have their own name. So I wasn't quite sure what was going on there. Couldn't find much information on it. But I did find a couple, well, actually one Reddit post and some other information out there that said uh, it actually shows up on New, New Jersey Trail Conference maps, at least one of them. Doesn't have a shelter symbol, but just written in that area, it says unmaintained shelter. And uh, found a couple people that said they stayed there. Ironically, it's completely made out of sheet metal, so it's in great condition despite being unofficial and unmaintained. Um, so I'm just going to take the gray area with that and plan to stay there. I mean, it's a shelter. They haven't torn it down. Even though it's not on the official list for the park. Pretty sure I'll be okay if I go there and stay. And because it's not official or on the main maps in the middle of winter, uh, I think it would be a good start for me to try out going to a shelter. Hopefully I'll have the place to myself, but we'll see. Then the following night, 
I'll go to one of the listed shelters and we'll see if I have to use a tent or not there. But that's the plan for this trip. A little snow on the ground, following the yellow blazes. And uh, see if we can get to this shelter, make a little fire and get a sleeping pad, just spread out and live it up. I got some fun food with me. We'll see, but you can always have a plan and you should, but they do tend to go awry. So I'll be ready for that, but at least I have a semblance of an idea of what I want to do. Whew. Wind is picking up. Starting to flatten out and open up though. Man, it's probably a nice place to hang out, but the wind is pretty serious right now. You see the yellow blazes on these rocks. You can see the mountain ridge down there, and that's where I came from. We'll go down here and tuck out of the wind. It's only been a couple miles, but like I said, it is midday. I may look for a place to make a quick bite to eat. Get a little calories in me to push on towards camp. If those clouds continue to break, sun might just warm me up a little bit so I think this might be where I'm gonna take my lunch break right here I want to do a hot lunch why not it's uh, a little after 1230 sun feels great took my gloves off got them stuffed in my jacket my wife packed me like I said some grilled cheese and Tupperware containers she made a couple different kinds one looks pretty standard. I'll start with that. I'll save the special ones for later. Pulls right back. Oh, and there's my fry pan. So we'll put that together. Make some uh, grilled cheese. Looks like fresh cracked pepper. Now, one thing I've learned about this uh, little $8 canister stove is uh, the flame pattern's pretty narrow, so I gotta keep this thing moving. Oh yeah, fresh cracked black pepper and sea salt grilled cheese. In the middle of the woods. Pretty sure I can deal with this with extra butter. Oh, mm. hot and delicious. Mm. A little aged cheddar too. Wow, this would be amazing under any circumstance. Out in the middle of the snow, even better. So this will get me fueled up. I'll soak in the sights a little bit and then uh, get back on the trail, I guess. up top now should be mostly downhill from here maybe we'll tuck out of this wind too definitely makes a difference in the cold red markers now two of them cock to the right so we're going right and this area is cool I mean it's just a wide open kind of rock bald kind of vibe going on very cool area and another cool thing is this is only 
like two and a half, under three hours away from my house. I, I, um, I live kind of outside or south of Philly, if you're familiar. And I uh, gotta give a big shout out to Dan D, who's a viewer of the channel, him and his daughter watch. And I just happen to be messaging back and forth with him um, about some logistics about New Hampshire. And just happened to be figuring out or trying to figure out what I was gonna do for my next trip. And he wrote, Hey, thanks for the info, and uh, by the way, have you ever tried the West Point, New York area? And I said, no, haven't really uh, looked at that, but he gave me some more info, and I said, I think I'm going to do it this week. So I did. So here I am. So thanks, Dan. Uh, this is pretty cool. It's probably one of the closest places to New York City that you can actually go to has, well, stuff that looks like this and shelters and whatnot but it's a good find and i was able to get here within a few hours of course since i've been blabbing and running my mouth i'm not sure if i lost the trail nope there's another one right there and i think we're off the rock now back into the woods and we'll keep on moving towards home for tonight I suppose a few more miles of careful footing give them credit for their trail markers we switched over red and white to blue and white with an L we'll be uh, hanging out on that for a little bit just kind of enjoying the uh, sunshine's breaking out of the clouds but nonetheless it is uh, after two o'clock so I'm down to eh, Two-ish hours of sunlight. That sun is getting lower. We've kind of dipped back into the trees here. Which is nice. It's cutting the wind down. And now we're on a red and white triangle blaze. Accompanied by a teal blaze. The long path. A little slippery. Plenty of snow, but I'm feeling pretty good. There's some water there too, but I got about three liters on me. So I think I'm good to keep moving. I got some water treatment tablets with me to uh, make any water I find safe instead of using a filter when it could freeze. But I'm just gonna keep on moving. Hopefully, we can beat that sun before it uh, dips down too low. Come to an intersection. We're going to go left. And this should bring us through the woods and downhill towards the Appalachian Trail. Definitely getting colder. But I feel pretty warm because... Uh, I have a decent pack on. One mile to go. A little bit of uphill, that's for sure. Look at that rock face. And there's the sun. Taunting. We're on a ridge 
now the top of Island Pond Mountain, I believe. Snow has turned from white to a lighter shade of blue. The sun is going away. It is sunset now. It's still got some light left, but it is about 4.38 or so. The good news is I'm within an eighth mile radius of where the shelter should be. Remember, I have two spots that it could be. One from Google Maps and then one from uh, another map I found online. We're kind of coming off this ridge here, following these teal blazes. But whew, there's a steady breeze. Temp is dropping. Feels like it's cracking into the 20s now. Upper 20s, but it's going to go lower, I'm sure. But I'm just going to start scouting around at this point. Uh, my first kind of mode of search will be to my left. And then if I don't see it by then, I'll hit an intersection. At which point I'll go left and it might be on my right. But I just got to scout around and see what I find. And hopefully I'll stumble upon it soon before I lose too much sunlight. Because that is going away. But we'll see. <laughs> All right, you know what? I'm not even going to lie. That was supposed to be a dramatic scene because I really thought I was going to have to search. I swear, I was looking up at the camera at the sky. I looked down. And right there is a metal roof. I don't think this shelter is quite so hidden after all. Perhaps the trail I'm on is less traveled. But that is a shelter. I mean, it's a roof. <laughs> it's right here. I, that's crazy. Right when I was going to start thinking I really had to search, you might not find it. It is right there. That's corrugated steel and a roof. And uh, dramatics aside, I guess I won't, uh, <laughs> won't have to look too, too far. Now, I have read this is a lesser used portion of the park, but this is right on the Teal Trail. So I don't know why this shelter isn't talked about more, if not for the fact that most people don't do this trail, I guess. And I only chose it because I thought this shelter would be along it. But look at that. Made out of metal. Now, a lot of the ones around here and the one we'll see tomorrow is like made out of um, stone, which is very rustic and fun. But this thing should last forever, it seems. I'm not sure when it was built, but look at that. Oh, we're here and nobody else is. So this is ours. There's a main fire pit there. And, yep, there's a closer one that I'll be using to try to reflect some heat into the shelter right here. Wood floors, old can of uh, cream of mushroom soup, apparently. Get my flashlight out. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, my hands are frozen. Somebody's socks, a couple pots, Dennis Sullivan, 1972, May, and look at this, an old painting mounted on the wall, impressionist style, I guess. Oh, my hands are freezing. All right. so. What I'm going to do right now is uh, drop this pack, collect some firewood, set up my sleeping pad, make some dinner. Although it's only 4.30 or I guess quarter of five. I'm hungry. So let me get on that. We'll see that where that takes us. 
All right. Got some small scrap wood laying around with some leaves on it. I'm hoping this will uh, give me a nice base. Didn't build much of a uh, fancy, <laughs> no TP or log cabin. Just a pile of random wood and some leaves. We'll see what happens. So, see if that catches. If it does, hopefully, I'll head around here. I have a um, saw with me. Where'd it go? Right here. My silky F180 that a viewer sent me. Very nice. So I can cut apart some dead wood that I find laying about, which will help quite a bit. Um, but I don't think many people compared to the other shelters stay here. So I think my chance of getting wood here is going to be better. So we'll see if this catches. I'm going to feed it some little twigs and stuff like that. And uh, hopefully that'll give me some warmth that I'll radiate right into the shelter. And then I'm going to cook some dinner. A little pork and rice. Some peak refuel. Stir that up. Let it sit for 10 minutes. Shut that guy off. Got the fire going. Night sky is dark. Oof. All right. A shredded pork with brown sugar, rice, and vegetables. It's only about 6.30, but it feels like midnight. Oh wow, maybe because I'm in the middle of nowhere, but that tastes like some legit pulled pork with a little brown sugar. Mm. I'm gonna enjoy this. Um, probably, I mean, nobody's here. I don't think anybody's coming, so. I'm gonna blow up my sleeping pad and just pretty much camp right here inside the shelter. And then uh, a little campfire, a little barbecue. And then we'll hit the hay and wake up and see what happens next. Good morning, everyone. cold you see a fiery pink on the horizon there and it's about 7 12 in the morning and the sky's lighting up the fire yeah I put a pretty big log on there last night that I cut up with my saw big thick guy like you have in your fireplace at home and he burnt for hours, just that single log. And it definitely made a difference. With this corrugated roof that hangs right over top. It radiated in here pretty good. And kept it uh, definitely several degrees warmer than it was outside of the shelter. But I don't feel that heat anymore, that's for sure. It was burnt out, or burnt down. But, had a place all to myself, nice little fire, like I said, two dinners. Uh, I had that pork dinner last night, which was awesome, and then I had a regular old school mountain house uh, spaghetti and meat sauce. <sighs> Always good to have plenty of calories 
because uh, you do burn more calories when you're cold. So that was nice for sitting around last night. I have a double dinner, but now I guess I'll make a cup of coffee. Uh, may not eat breakfast quite yet. Uh, I'm not really hungry yet, but maybe I'll have that on the trail. We'll get moving. Pack my stuff away. I don't have to break down a tent or anything. I just have my pack over there, of course. My stool I didn't really need because I was sitting on the edge of the shelter here. My water was staying thawed out, sitting next to the fire, but now that it's burnt down, it looks like it's uh, starting to freeze over. So it's in the 20s right now for sure. And um, it should pop back above freezing at some point during the day today. So that'll be a nice, that'll be nice. But. Yeah, I'll just enjoy this sunrise here and uh, have a cup of coffee and convince myself to get back at it. Get these boots back on. I have my Dutchware synthetic uh, booties. I went ahead and slept in those, but I had those when I was sitting around in the shelter as well. These are nice. But they'll be coming off now. And the boots will be going on. Ooh, cold boot. Ooh, slightly frozen boots. Got my food. It was pretty easy to bring it up there because I got this ledge here that I could throw the rock from. So it was a straight shot to the branch. See the shelter right back there. And it's just my cook set stuff sack for my cook pot. I left the rock in there because I was lazy, but just shoved the rock in there. And that made for an easy throw bag basically but I'm done with that till tonight now oh, I got my bag of grilled cheese and my bag of quote-unquote right now food and snacks I'll tell you what this is a nice area though really cool little shelf down there and the shelter right there Pretty nice. Alright, well, I'm about ready for coffee. more moments and we'll have some hot coffee I think I changed my mind might make some ramen noodle soup as well that'll be my breakfast I'm not hungry like I said but um, I have learned from experience to, for hiking and backpacking at least just ignore that impulse and force myself to eat some breakfast because I got some hiking to do today cheers a little hot coffee, some hot noodles, and then I'll get packed up, deflate the sleeping pad, shove my sleeping bag back in the 
stuff sack, throw it all back in the backpack, put it on my back, and get back on the trail. See where today goes. All right, all packed up. Everything is back in the bag. And as usual, I spent way too much time at camp. It is 10 o'clock, but I've been just enjoying the view, listening to an audio book, and uh, just enjoying myself. But we still do have six miles to go. So I should probably, probably get on it. Uh, the next shelter won't be a metal one. It'll be more of a stone design. Now, some of the shelters around here actually have uh, fireplaces built into them, which is really cool. So I'm looking forward to checking that out. Um, I don't know if I'll have that next shelter to myself or not. But speaking of shelters and routes, got my paper map down there. Now, I will be the first to point out that you should always despite all the technology we have at our disposal nowadays, you should still carry a paper map. That being said, I have to admit, um, this was a last minute trip. Like I said, shout out to Dan for giving me the idea, but it was last minute. I didn't have a paper map for this trip. I downloaded um, and printed out some trip descriptions and trail reports and stuff like that that I have over in my pack, but I didn't have a paper map. I actually found this one laying in the woods, surprisingly. And uh, I guess fate bestowed upon me a map. But sure enough, I do see uh, right there, unmaintained shelter is marked with a dot. And it says unmaintained shelter. And this is the New York, New Jersey Trail Conference map. And like I was uh, saying before, shelters are marked with an S on here, as you can see. But uh, this one's not, it's just a dot. But surprisingly, it's in great shape. Uh, no fireplace, but it's in great shape. So anyway, based on my new map here, I'm right here. And just to give you perspective, yesterday we started here at the Kennewak picnic area. And that's just about right where the road was um, closed. So we hiked up the road, little road hike, did that uh, fire road kind of thing, hooked up with the real trail here. It's the yellow trail with the Y. We came around to Bald Rocks and then over here and made our way up this way, long path. Here we are at Unmaintained Shelter. The bulk of today, we're gonna stay on the New York Long Path. We keep cruising all the way up that to Stockbridge Mountain, Stockbridge Shelter. I'm not gonna stay there, I don't think, um, but maybe we'll check that out, see what it looks like. Then we'll take the yellow trail or Menamine trail around here past Silvermine Lake and on down to my target for today, which is Bryan Memorial Shelter right there. That's my target. My plan for today is to get there. Tomorrow, we'll hop this yellow trail some more to Red Cross and right on back down to... Oh, there we go. Red Cross to the picnic area once again. I think I'm going to hop across here and then kind of backtrack probably some of the same road hike that I had to do yes, uh, yesterday to get back to the vehicle. But I may be getting ahead of myself. Right now, I need to get my pack back on and get at it. Um, I am realizing now I still have my puffy jacket on. Uh, probably a mistake. It feels good now, but I'm probably going to heat up instantly once I get all that weight on my back. But eh, we'll see. All right, let's get it on and let's do it.
Well, this is odd. What do you think this is? I mean, I know they're pipes. They don't go anywhere. At least this one doesn't. It's got a teal trail marker on it. And there's several more of them. What did this used to be? Or what is it still? I don't know. Well, these ones are going somewhere. Well, I guess universal type R. Water line. It's weird. I've never come across something like that before. Now you can see it going all the way up the hill there. All right. Relatively mild trail so far. I'm still on it. Oh, there it is. All right. Anyway, plugging along. Tell you what, I definitely think I forgot to bring my uh, little thermometer on this trip. I have my Casio smartwatch, but it's on my wrist, so that won't do any good. But. I don't know exactly how cold it is or was, but based on how my hands were stinging this morning, I'm thinking it might have been closer to 15 degrees in the teens. Got a little bite out here. It doesn't seem to be warming up. Not yet, at least. Oh, there's an actual long path marker. Finally got some uphill here. Pretty much the first time today. Whew. Starting to get a little hungry. I'm thinking that Stockbridge shelter, if nobody's there already, might just do a lunch break there. See what my other uh, surprise grilled cheese is. One more push in front of me here. And I think I see a roof poking up right around there. It might be the shelter up top. I can't tell. I think I might have heard a voice too. So if it's occupied, we'll keep moving. But. Let's see. One more push. Oh, here we are. That's it. There's actually some smoke over there. There's a group down there. I don't know if they're camping for tonight or just here for the day. I'm surprised they're not up here. Double fireplace. Right there. Over the chimney. And another one. Chimney. Soccer ball. Interesting. Well, I think I'll go ahead and set up here, make a grilled cheese, and then at this point we're going to leave, after this, we're going to leave the long path behind and hit the orange trail. <sighs> towards our shelter. We'll see what that looks like. The Brian Williams. This is a stock bridge, but let's see what it looks like from up here. Okay, 
Okay, tin roof. Not bad, it's actually brighter out here. Might be better off to uh, cook my grilled cheese right here out in daylight. Let's see what my wife packed me. seat right here I guess. Let's see what we got. Right over that. That's my container from yesterday. This one, oh boy, looks like it has pepperoni and two frozen pickles that I'll have to thaw out. Maybe I'll do that tonight. It'll be a little quicker right now. This one, oh boy, Plenty of butter, some dried that I grew in my own garden. Look at that, nice. These are uh, Caribbean red peppers. Remind me not to rub my eyes anytime soon. And a little, it's like mustard. She does like mustard on grilled cheese. And that, mm. oh man, is Chinese spicy mustard. So. Do a little Chinese spicy mustard and Caribbean red grilled cheese. Oh, she put bits of Caribbean red in the grilled cheese. And then I have these ones on the side if I'm feeling daring. Uh, these are hotter than a habanero, but not as hot as a uh, Carolina Reaper. Should I try a little bite right now? They picked up a little rehydration from being in there with the bread. That's a big chunk. Oh. Shouldn't have done that. Oh, okay. I'm awake now. I'm going to cook some grilled cheese. See if these clouds blow out or not. Oh, my mouth's on fire. believe an executive decision has been made I think I'm gonna stay here I'm definitely not at my target for today but that's all right we'll do a little more miles tomorrow but for some reason this place has grown on me I got 360 views some trees in the way but either way probably get sunset sunrise pretty good up here of course I have the clouds but I'm not worried about that but personally I've never had the opportunity to stay in a shelter that has a built-in chimney and a fireplace let alone two built-in chimneys and fireplaces and uh, granted the wood around here is probably pretty pick clean but to my advantage I got the saw and I can cut up some stuff that most people wouldn't mess with even this thing right here I think uh, ain't got nothing better to do I could probably cut that up into some real big chunks and really fuel these fireplaces um, once I get it started with some smaller sticks so I think that's what I'm gonna do Last night was the first night that I ever stayed in a shelter, I think, solo at least. I think I did it once uh, eight years ago with some friends. But tonight, I'm going to take the opportunity to do a little fireplace shelter. So my first uh, order of business, I believe, there's a bunch of rocks in this chimney here. I don't know why, but luckily I got my work gloves. And I got a separate pair of warm gloves, so I'm not worried about messing these up. Nice Milwaukee work gloves. So I'm going to work on reorganizing these rocks and stones here. And I'll go probably down this way, collect some firewood, and uh, just make a home for tonight. 
I mean, part of me thinks I'm being pretty lazy, which I am, because it's uh, early afternoon and I'm already ready to stop for the day. But then again, it is mid-December, so early afternoon still means there's only two hours or so until sunset. Not long at all. So I can either hike until dark again or I can just make a home out of this and hike a little harder tomorrow, at which point I'm gonna get back to the car and uh, go back to society and hot showers and all that stuff anyway. So I think I'm gonna make this my home. The voices I heard down there look like some uh, group of younger people having a good time, good for them. But um, as I suspected, they were doing just a daytime thing. So I watched from my vantage point up here, they actually headed out. So as of right now, I got the place to myself. And if not, whoever shows up next, if they uh, come in late, hopefully we'll have a pleasant surprise and I'll have a nice chimney in the fireplace going. But anyway, I'm gonna work on reconfiguring this chimney and the rocks, collect some firewood and see if I can't get some uh, warmth in here. I got a couple fire starters left, but if I don't have to use them, ideally I won't. So that's a start at least. So my goal is get this going with small, just sticks that are laying around here. Maybe go out with the uh, saw and hunt down some slightly larger ones. Get this guy established. And then once I have that going good, I can, uh, build another one right underneath of where you're looking from in the other fireplace and uh, use some fire from this to get that one started. At which point, it'll probably be getting dark and then I could use the uh, chunks of wood from that log over there. If one goes out, I can feed the other one and vice versa. This is more enclosed than the other structure last night. It's also built of stone, so it'll take a while to heat up. But once it does, these rocks will actually hold some heat. That's my reality right now. Build fire, keep it alive. I'll probably put my water up here on the, look, I even got a mantle. So I'll thaw my water out. It is frozen. That uh, temperature is dipping back down again. Uh, that's the one thing I have to worry about, or I should say I should be conscious of, is um, there's no water up here. So I'll let that sit up there and it should slowly thaw out. And now it's just uh, the hunt for firewood. Right there. That 
That should have some staying power. Here we go. Big chunk over here. And a little fire in the other hearth. We'll see if this can catch. But now we have, at least for now, two fires. Got about a half hour until sunset. Just basically been uh, spending my time collecting firewood. Tell you what though, it is definitely a lot warmer in here than outside. Part of that is just the fact that the uh, wind is cut down, but double fireplace is pretty nice too. And these rocks are starting to warm up. Water's not quite thawed out, but it'll get there, I hope. Gonna have to use that to cook some dinner. Now I'm on. <sighs> not bad though. I can dig it. Night has fallen quickly. Somehow or another, it's uh, after seven. Might as well be midnight. Luckily, I got both fireplaces going. I'm uh, playing it patient. Slow burn on some thick logs that I cut up from that guy over there. Same over here with my water bottles staying thawed out. Got a little cup of noodles right there. I'm gonna hit that before I go to bed. I got one more piece of wood right there. It's a big boy, so I'm gonna jam him into the furnace <laughs> uh, right before bed. But we got some snow coming down pretty intense for the last hour, hour and a half. I hear the coyotes in the distance again. I don't think you can hear them on camera, but uh, they're uh, pretty vocal around here. Last night they were pretty close to camp and barking, which was strange, um, or a new experience, I'll say. But I'm high up on the mountaintop. <sighs> We'll see what happens. The snow is actually blowing into the shelter a little bit because of the wind. So I'm gonna tuck myself back in the corner there and uh, try to stay out of the snow and hopefully manage this wood and keep it warm in here and get through the next, uh, well, oof. <laughs> there's more snow right there. Get through the next, uh, I don't know, 10 hours or so, stare at the fire and try to stay warm. See what kind of snow we have in the morning. Ooh. We certainly got some nice fresh coat of snow out there as well as on myself uh, it's been blowing pretty heavy winds and uh, my sleeping bag is covered would have been a good time to have a uh, bivy sack but thankfully this um, hammock gear uh, quilt sorry I'm just waking up is um it breathes pretty well and the um down is treated with a water resistant or dwr coating but there is a dusting of snow on everything and like i said the wind's whipping pretty good uh so it's about 7 15. i'm gonna start getting up i suppose <sighs> 
see what I want to do here. Boots are on. Snow is pretty deep. I think we picked up. Jeez, I don't know. Over six inches. Maybe eight inches out here. I, it's hard to tell because of the drifting how much really came down. But I mean, that didn't look like that last night, now did it? <laughs> Let's see, my log completely burned out as expected, but that went pretty good. I woke up around 2 a.m. or something like that to uh, answer nature's call and it pretty much died out. So I took a chunk from over here, combined it with a chunk over there and it uh, kicked back off again until I went, fell back asleep. So that was kind of nice. Um, I'm pretty much all packed up now, close to it. And then uh, I haven't eaten breakfast. So I'm just gonna get right at it today. Maybe stop at um, the shelter. I was supposed to camp at for breakfast break or something. <laughs> um, this new pad, I'll show you that, it's working good. It's by Amok, um, which is the people that make my really crazy um, cool hammock um, that I've shown before, the Dramar uh, for hammock camping. But anyway, this pad is actually designed to be used in the Dramar XL hammock, but they sent it to me. It's the winter version, um, and they just said thanks for featuring us in the video. So here you go try out a new sleeping pad it's rated to negative one fahrenheit um and this is the xl there's also a long wide and i guess i don't know if they have a standard size but i like the xl because it's ridiculously long i think it's like 85 88 inches long i don't know i'll put the stats in the video description but yeah it's nice and cushy cushy pardon me tongue's frozen this morning and my butt was not cold at all so we probably went into the teens, so I haven't truly tested it to negative one, but I'm digging the new pad. I know my wife likes um, really thick pads too, but she won't come out in the winter, but maybe I'll let her try it uh, when spring comes along. Man, it is not spring out here, is it? Random pro tip, by the way, if you're gonna put on or take off a canister stove in winter, make sure you're wearing gloves because sometimes they spray a little bit of gas and believe me yep there we go it wasn't that bad that time believe me it will give you some serious uh frostbite or a burning sensation that you'll never want to feel again I've definitely done that to myself before anyway pack this guy up and uh <laughs> head out into the wind. All right. Say goodbye to my home there as I trudge into the snow. I'm packed up. I'm back in the wind and whoa, <laughs> maybe I should be wearing gaiters or rain pants right now. That's a good foot and a half right there of drift. All right. I can't even remember. Whoa what's underneath me here if it's rocks or roots oh oh god well at least i'm going back to the car today hopefully if i get a little wet it's not the end of the world but oh my god <laughs> i should put rain pants on that is a drift in half all right yeah we got a good couple feet on the ground here and i'm just going carefully because i can't tell uh what what my feet are landed on top of so taking it slow i guess today's going to be a little slow should i have factored that into my decision yesterday to stop a couple miles short yeah maybe that's all right yellow blazes or was it orange looks yellow to me but this is where we leave the long path and uh <laughs> slowly trudge along towards Brian Williams shelter where I was going to stay yesterday but it should be a couple miles from now and I'll probably have breakfast there see how I feel got to re-up on water at some point too there was a slight trickle back there but I still got a little bit of drinking water with me 
and there should be another stream before we hit that shelter so I'll just keep the weight off my back and uh, load up on the water a little closer hopefully that's the right decision snow is unrelenting it's continuing to come down and adding a ton of fresh powder fresh pow pow uh, the trail actually goes over there but look here we've come to our first lake of the day I'm gonna mispronounce it but I believe it was something to the effect of Lake Nawahunta and uh, after that will be the larger silver mine lake and also another road crossing and from what Dan pointed out to me, um, there should be restrooms there with water. Although when he was telling me about this trip, it was from the perspective of going in spring. So I have a feeling the bathrooms might be closed. Um, and that there is a frozen lake. So won't be getting any water out of that. Oh, look, there's some flowing water. Maybe I'll grab that. But it's just been slow going um, with this deep snow and not knowing what's underneath me, speaking of which, uh, a little wary of this because I could break through into the water. I wouldn't want to do that. I do have obviously waterproof Gore-Tex boots on, but I don't want to go over the ankle. I can avoid it. So we go carefully across here, maybe pick up a little water. road crossing looks like. There's Silver Mine Lake. Some plow trucks in the distance. I don't know if you can hear them. For the Silver Mine parking area. Snow is deep. <laughs> so I hope I'm not plowed in too bad. Uh, luckily I do have the Jeep. I can muscle my way out, I'm pretty sure. Uh, whenever I get there, that is. At this point, I am cracking past 11 o'clock. I'm just sludging along and then honestly I should have just taken the time to eat breakfast at camp this morning. I think that's messing with my energy level and uh, probably mental clarity too. Should have just eaten. But I'm really just trying to push through because I'm I got some pork fried rice and that leftover Chinese mustard from uh, <laughs> my grilled cheese last night. I think that would be amazing to have some Chinese food for lunch my dinner last night i didn't show you but i had the third and final grilled cheese that my wife made me and let me tell you it was amazing uh it was a pepperoni and cheese pizza grilled cheese basically she took mozzarella cheese shredded and used that to make the grilled cheese with pepperoni slices in between and I think it changed my life. And if you can't tell, I'm hungry right now. I'm fantasizing about all kinds of food and burgers and hard to believe today, I'll hopefully be getting out of the woods. And as is customary, I do a nice cheeseburger somewhere. Man, I'm hungry. I'll make it to this shelter and we'll see if it was um, 
how cool it looks if I should have stayed there or not. We'll see. I did like that mountaintop spot last night, but you never know. Keep on moving. Keep on moving. Oh. We're into some uphill here. Have been for a little bit since I left the lake behind. Uh, took a little sit down there by the lake, which was nice. But I'm burning daylight and I'm not even to where I was supposed to originally leave from today. That's okay. Looks like the ridge kind of opens up here. So. I'm thinking the uh, shelter should be right up here and get myself cooking some lunch. <laughs> Hi! How's it going? All right. Well, they sound like they're having a good time. That was Brian Williams' shelter. A little full right now. So I'll probably just plop down somewhere and cook my noodles. This is the direction, although I don't see any blazes. Looks like I am breaking trail completely now. Nobody has used this since the fresh foot and a half of snow that we got. But it's not the end of the world if I have to night hike. I'm not really worried about that. Just mentally, I think I'm ready to be back at the vehicle before that. But we'll see. It's time to do lunch. So I got my chicken fried rice, mountain house meal there. A little snow that I kicked in there by accident. A couple of my Caribbean red peppers. Well, actually, it's two halves, so I got the equivalent of a whole one in there. I'm going to let that rehydrate with the meal once the water starts boiling, of course, on my stove there. Just dug a little trench out in the snow to serve as a wind block. I got my little folding sit pad there to keep my butt dry and warm. And yeah, I'm going to let this rehydrate and just sit here and kind of soak in the views. Um, set myself back even more on time that's okay uh, I got I got a few hours at best of daylight left and uh, eight point something let's just call it eight miles to go um, yeah I forgot my last day was the highest mileage which of course is now added to the mileage that I did to get here today but I think I will say I'm not regretting my decision um, something told me that mountaintop campsite shelter two fireplaces having it to myself uh, just go for it and i'm glad i took it which i don't know if somebody would have been here or not last night um, but they might have been and i did like the view up there better so no regrets and i'll certainly i'm assuming have no regrets once this uh, chicken fried rice with hot peppers and hot mustard rehydrates eventually can't wait for that Longest 12 minutes of my life. Let's see what we got going on. There's um, onions, carrots, mushrooms, green peas. Mmm. Oh man. Yep. That. That is amazing. Has a little bit of heat. Get a little mustard. Dab that in there. Stir it around as needed. Oh yeah, that's nice. 
So I'm just going to enjoy this. That is for sure. Stare at the woods and the snow drifts and uh, just relax. And eventually, although it's hard to picture it, um, start moving again and breaking trail through this snow. We're on the Red Cross Trail now. And that sun is threatening the horizon. I am miles from the car. Not even to that next intersection yet. It's uh, going to get dark soon here, that's for sure. This snow is just, um, you know, it's slowing me down. I thought this was going to be my, and it has been, but this is my relaxed midwinter trip instead of deep winter. I wasn't expecting to worry about snowshoes or anything like that. I was going to maybe do that next month, but uh, just doesn't seem like much maybe, but pushing through constant snow and drifts. Um, it's just uh, time and energy consuming. So I got a bag of trail mix left. I can chomp on to get me to the car, Jeep. But yeah, I don't uh, think I'm gonna escape the night hike on this one. And it's been pretty steady, gradual, but steady uphill. Uphill that normally would probably be fine but with the snow and the weight on my back, it's a little slower. So I'm just taking it easy. Don't want to overexert myself. And I'm not terribly far from home, so I'm not that worried about it in terms of the, um, driving back home and everything. So that's what I'm doing. Just waiting for this intersection. And I can see a sliver of the moon up there ahead too caught in the trees maybe it'll guide me to the next decision I have to make <sighs> alright well the Red Cross trail takes a sharp turn here but I'm going to switch things up um, from looking at my maps on my phone and the paper one I found um rather than go back over this next mountain and then back down and then hiking back out the same way I hiked in and retracing my road hike. I'm gonna take this trail ahead of me. Don't even remember the name of it, but it's straight ahead. That'll eventually link me back up to the road. It'll save me a little bit of mileage, but more importantly, what I'm going for is it should be primarily downhill. And then once I get to the road, um, I'm just tired of slogging through this snow, so it'll be nice to, it, the road's got to at least be better than this, because um, I did see some plows going earlier. So, that's the plan, because I am running out of energy. I'm about ready to see that road. Jeep is still there. I can't wait to get in it and turn the heat on. Hopefully you can see me. It is, uh, well, <laughs> about 8.30, pushing up on nine o'clock. That last quote unquote trail was, um, if there's blazes on it, I didn't see them. So I didn't have any marks to go on, no visible trail because all the snow on the ground. <laughs> And some pretty deep drifts, so pretty much just set a heading, luckily with the GPS app, and um, basically felt like bushwhacking. Then I got down to one of the roads, quote-unquote road, that was not plowed, and finally back to this picnic area road, which is plowed, thankfully. So, a little late, so probably not going to get the fanciest burger on this trip. Might be a uh, fast food one, but that's okay. I am looking forward to that. So I think that about wraps it up. Three days and some uh, heavy snow here in New York.
So, till next time, I'm Syntax77, and right now, it's cheeseburger time.